1985, a very strange chess game began between two grandmasters. One of them had departed this planet over 30 years previously, and his motive was wanting to give those of us still here hope of a new life beyond this one. The game took place between Russian Grandmaster Viktor Korchnoi and deceased Grandmaster Hungarian Geza Marozzi, who made his moves via a medium who specialised in automatic writing. The game was played over the course of nearly eight years due to delays of spiritual contact and channeling. It was publicised on German TV and described in popular books and magazines. Given the intricacies of alternative explanations, the case is widely considered to provide convincing evidence of the survival of consciousness after human life ends. A Swiss asset manager and amateur chess player called Wolfgang Eisenbeiss decided to arrange a chess game between living and deceased grandmasters in 1985. He managed to persuade the Russian grandmaster Viktor Korchnoi to participate. Then living in Switzerland and ranked third in the world, Korchnoi had defected to the West in 1976. Eisenbeiss asked him to suggest a deceased grandmaster, should it be possible, that he would like to play and, after some thought, Korchnoi chose three departed grandmasters. Eisenbeiss then asked Robert Rollins, an automatic writing medium he had known over three years, to locate any one of these who would be agreeable to playing a game with Korchnoi. The spirit's moves were to be conveyed by a medium. Rollins himself was unfamiliar with chess and was also not paid for his assistance. By June, Rollins had been able to make contact with a communicator claiming to have been the Hungarian Grandmaster Geza Marozzi, who had passed away in 1951. He had ranked third worldwide in the year 1900. While the other two grandmasters could not be contacted, Marozzi agreed to the proposal. He gave his reasons as wanting to do something to aid humankind still living on Earth. This would be by convincing us that death does not end everything, but rather the mind is separated from the physical body and ventures up into another world where individual life continues in a new dimension unknown to us now. Marozzi's second reason for participating was that, being a Hungarian patriot, he wanted to guide the eyes of the world onto his beloved Hungary for a time. Via the medium's hand, Marozzi conveyed the first move in the message E4, which is chess notation to advance the White King's pawn two squares. Rollins then forwarded the move to Eisenbeiss, who accordingly sent it to Korchnoi. Korchnoi's countermove, E6, was then relayed back. Rollins had a portable chessboard and was able to communicate moves to Marozzi in the usual way. Rollins and Korchnoi never had direct contact with each other until September 1992, towards the end of the game, when they met on camera in a TV show. Play continued over seven years and eight months, concluding when Marozzi resigned on February 11th, 1993. Korchnoi had won the game after 47 moves. The length of time between the moves had varied depending upon Korchnoi's schedule and the poor health suffered by Rollins, who passed about three weeks after the game's completion. The pattern had been that, after Korchnoi made a move, Rollins usually waited 10 days to receive Marozzi's move. A tickle in his body would be the signal that he needed to sit down to write the incoming message. Eisenbeiss had had to teach Rollins the moves and notation system of chess, but the medium was still unable to retain Marozzi's detailed analyses of his moves. Korchnoi actually commented at move 27 that Marozzi's opening phase showed weaknesses, calling his play old-fashioned. However, Marozzi's strong endgame had Korchnoi feeling unsure if he could win. He stated that, in the endgame, 
the ability of a player shows up and that his opponent played very well. In 2007, neuropsychiatrist and amateur chess expert Vernon Nepp conducted a complex computer analysis to examine whether either the contest or Morozzi's playing style could have been simulated on a computer. He used software to score the two players' moves and noted that Morozzi had been known as a strong endgame player. Also, that chess techniques improved during the course of the 20th century, meaning that Morozzi would probably play only at master level by 1980s standards. Morozzi's spirit had actually communicated that he was rusty due to lack of practice and that the manner of playing also made it more difficult. Nepp concluded that Morozzi had played at least at the master level and possibly at a rusty, lowish grandmaster level. He said that assuming that Rollins was not a chess genius, this level could never have been achieved by the medium, even after extensive training. The difference in skill levels he thought probably related to opening theory developed in the 1950s after Morozzi had passed. Accordingly, Morozzi employed a chess opening variation that may have been refuted after his time. Regardless, he had gone on to play an excellent game, which was substantially better than the computer. It's worth noting that at the grandmaster level, computers lose to strong humans, largely because they can't think creatively. The game had been underway for about a year when Eisenbeiss decided to seek additional evidence that the communicator was definitely Geza Morozzi. He asked the spirit Far Rollins to relate some information about his life and chess playing on Earth. On July 31, 1986, Rollins wrote out 38 pages containing details of Morozzi's life with the comment that he was astonished that someone should disbelieve it was him when not everyone involved was a chess player. The text was imparted partly in Hungarian and partly in German that was clearly not that of a native speaker. To investigate the veracity of the information, Eisenbeiss composed 91 questions on personal details, chess playing and Morozzi's tournament wins and enlisted historian and chess aficionado Laszlo Sebastian to seek answers in historical records. Sebastian consulted the libraries of the Budapest Chess Club and Hungarian Parliament. He also visited the Hungarian Scientific Academy and interviewed Morozzi's two surviving elderly children and a cousin, sourcing answers to almost all the questions. The verbal results of the questioning were that 97.5% of the answers were correct. With the questions also ranked by degree of difficulty, he found that 94% of questions requiring hidden or private knowledge were correctly answered by the spirit. Several of the verifications provided striking evidence. An example was when Eisenbeiss later questioned Morozzi about a match he had played against an obscure player called Romi in San Remo, Italy in 1930. Morozzi's position had appeared hopeless and defeat certain until he made an inspired move and eventually went on to win. Asked if the name Romi meant anything to him, Morozzi replied that he had had a childhood friend by the name of Romi, ending with an H, who had defeated him and then years later appeared at the tournament. He described his then win over Romi as thrilling. Research later uncovered that Romi, with an H, was of Slab origin and had emigrated to Italy in 1918. Later he had dropped the H from his name because the spelling was unfamiliar to Italians. Another strong verification came about when Morozzi was asked the question, who was the Austrian founder of the Vera Menschik Club? Vera Menschik was the first female world chess champion, retaining the championship from 1927 until her loss of life in a bombing in 1944. 
The Vera Menchik Club was an informal grouping of men who she had defeated, and the Austrian founder was the club's first member and president, who had lost to Menchik in 1929. In his reply, Morozzi confessed that he could not recall and suggested three possible men, then incorrectly dismissed the right answer. When told the correct answer, Morozzi described another incident that occurred at the same 1929 tournament in Karlsbad, Germany. The world champion, Jose Raul Capablanca of Havana, attended the tournament accompanied by a Russian girlfriend. While he was playing, his Cuban wife arrived unexpectedly and, Morozzi wrote, the moment Capablanca saw her, his face turned white and then red. Morozzi had been present at the time. Taken off guard, the champion disastrously bungled his next move, resulting in a loss to an inferior opponent. Morozzi's account was found to tally with that of an author, who claimed that he may be the only one aware of the reason for Capablanca's surprising error. The story was unable to be found in any other source. In his 2007 analysis, Nepp concludes that the accurate factual details provided by the medium strongly support the presence of genuine communication. A fraudulent concoction would have required the collaboration of many people, including Eisenbeiss and Marozzi's children. He also believed that the complexity of responses rules out non-survivalist explanations, which might claim that the information is retrieved paranormally from the memories of the living rather than spirits. Nepp also noted that the great American grandmaster Bobby Fischer reviewed the Marozzi versus Kochnoi game and stated that anyone who could give that degree of fight to Victor Korchnoi over so many moves was probably playing at grandmaster level. Some skeptics have played down the significance of the mammoth chess game, citing lack of scientific rigour and too many windows for potential fraud. However, they disregard the best evidence, such as the Capablanca incident and details known only to Marozzi's family. Others suggest that Victor Korchnoi may have been orchestrating the process via Super ESP. However, this criticism again ignores the interview data and also requires that Rollins was able to access Korchnoi's thoughts to an unprecedented degree. Besides which, if Rollins knew what his opponent was thinking and planning, he surely would have won the game.